Now that we've described symmetry operators and symmetry elements, we're ready to discuss what is a group in the context of chemistry. Now group theory is something that you can take in abstract mathematics and you can uh, study this until the cows come home, but there's very specific parts of group theory that we're interested in chemistry, so we're not interested in the most general definitions. We're just going to kind of use what is necessary for our purposes and leave some of the more advanced details out where we can. Okay, so for our purposes, a group is a set of entities that satisfy the following rules. So number one, if I can draw straight, number one, there is a rule for combining members. So combining members and the result is also part of the group. Okay, so for our purposes, uh, these groups are going to be composed of symmetry operations. So what is that going to mean for us? So that's going to be things like if we have a product of two operators, like operator B acting on a molecule, then operator A acting on a molecule, that product is going to be defined as operator C. And so that means that... <clears throat> For all of these cases, for all members of A, B, and C are going to be part of the group. Okay, so any operator A and B, their product is going to form an operator C, and that's also going to be part of the group. So then C and B, that forms an operator, that's also part of the group. A and C, that forms an operator, that's part of the group. And those resultant operators multiplied times any of those are also part of the group. So this is what they say is uh, the group is closed under multiplication, is what uh, the mathematicians might say. Okay, number two is that this multiplication, however you define that operation, here we define that as successive operations of symmetry operators. The multiplication is associative. So if we remember back to our math classes and remember what associative means, that means if we have something like C acting and then B, and then the result is acted upon by A, that is the same as A and as C acting and then it acting on by the product of A and B. So this is different than uh, what we would normally in quantum mechanics would say as commutative. Commutative is a different thing, but it's associative. So we can take the product of B and C, act on that, then act on it with A, or we can take the product of, or we can take, act on something with C, then act on it with the product of A and B, and we'll get the same result there. So it doesn't matter in which order we multiply these operators together uh, as long as it's the same net order of the three of them. So that will be important as well. Three, it contains an identity element. So this is why we have the identity operation. This is why we have the identity element. This is why it's important to have the identity, even though it seems trivial, is that it's necessary to satisfy the condition of being a group. So in that case, what we have is something like the identity multiplied times any given operator is just that operator itself. And that will be true for all operators which are members of the group. Okay, so no matter what operator this is, whether it's a sigma, whether it's I, whether it's C2, C3, C4, S1, S2, whatever, uh, e even if it's the identity itself, sigma H, sigma V, doesn't matter. Any operator times the identity is just going to be that operator itself again. Okay, and then four, final, uh, final rule, is that all members have an inverse. So every operation has an opposite which undoes it. 
So that means we can write things like a to the minus 1 times a equals e, a to the minus 1 equaling the inverse of the operator a, that this statement must be true for all operators a which are members of the group. Okay, so every operator has to have an inverse. Every identity element is the inverse of itself because e times e equals e. We have sigma is usually the, op usually the inverse of itself because sigma twice gives you e, as we said in the first video. Um, C2 is itself inverse because C2 squared is E. C2 squared is C1, which is rotation by 360 degrees, is E. Um, <clears throat> then other elements might have more complicated inverses that aren't uh, themselves or might not necessarily be obvious from the start. Okay, but these four rules are the, are the conditions that that satisfy a group. We're not going to worry too much about these definitions uh, from now on. I just wanted to introduce those so that you're aware of those. What this is really going to be useful for is because the symmetry operations and the symmetry elements of a molecule form a group. That group is called a point group and that point group has a lot of useful properties that we can use for uh, determining chemical information about a system which is predetermined only using its symmetry and not considering anything else about the system.